Welcome to the Improving Rehabilitation Services Community of Practice. You may have previously joined our webinar that discussed some of the technical aspects and resources to help clinicians, commissioners and finance colleagues to work together to quantify the value of rehabilitation. If you didn't and want to view the recording, we'll provide you with the URL to find this at the end of the podcast. If you're listening now because you're keen to work more closely with finance colleagues, but a bit daunted about how to get things started, we hope this podcast will be of help. We have Sanjay Agrawal here today. He's going to share his experience as a clinician who knows the benefits of striking up a close partnership with colleagues in finance. Sanjay is also the National Responsible Officer for the close partnering element of a national project called Future Focused Finance. He has some pr practical tips to offer about how you might forge effective partnerships which can help you in your efforts to improve services and to develop compelling evidence to quantify their value. I'm a consultant in a hospital and I'm part of several different services so I know what it's like for people to try and justify um, you know, rehabilitation services and other services. As, as um, a head of a specialist service, we all have to justify why our service is important and why we need additional investment, or as a lot of hospitals are doing at the moment, cutting services and why we have to maintain the service at the current level. It's really important that we, we know how to work with finance uh, to make the best possible case to maintain our services. We, we know that um, medicine and, and looking after patients is, is moving much more into the community. Um, and we have to do things differently to the way we're doing them at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's envisaged that more and more will be provided outside of hospitals. So it's really important that uh, therapists who work in the community work with colleagues in other sectors and other parts of the health service to make the best business case to transform services and, and move them from potentially anyway from the current model to ones where patients get care closer to home. Close partnering is part of something called future focused finance. And this was a recognition that we need to do things differently. We need finance uh, professionals to work much more closely with clinicians of all varieties, from therapists to nurses to doctors. There's also a recognition that many clinicians don't really know much about finance, me included. Um, and you know, our clinical training focuses on our clinical work. Um, but actually, one part of professional life as a clinician is also to develop your services and make them better. But to do that, you need some understanding of finance. Um, so what the close partnering uh, part of Future Focus Finance is all about is to get a better relationship and better knowledge of each other's speciality. So finance needs to know more about clinical work and, and clinicians need to know more about finance. So we all speak the same language uh, and we can all move in the same direction with a common purpose being the patient at the end of the day. So we did a, a survey last year to try and understand what clinicians know about finance. The bottom line is that most, most clinicians didn't know anything about finance at all. And actually, the people that filled in this survey, 80% of them were budget holders, major budget holders who you know, directed millions of pounds worth of um, NHS uh, services. Uh, so that was a real eye-opener. Um, and, and, and that sort of reaffirmed our awareness that we need to help clinicians learn much more about finance which is therefore one of the goals of our program. So to help this issue of clinicians not knowing very much about finance uh, we decided to try and set up a network of um, finance people predominantly who want to teach clinicians about finance uh, and we've called this network the Finance Educator Network. Uh, to date, we've got about 140 uh, finance professionals all over the country who've taken on this role. Um, through our website on Future Focus Finance, you can find the, the closest finance educator uh, to your organisation. What would be great, of course, is if your organisation had its own finance educator uh, who goes around and helps clinicians like you um, and I uh, to understand more about finance. So if you can um, either A, go to the, the, uh, our website and see if there's one in your organisation, or B, just ask your director of finance and say you've heard of Future Focus Finance and the finance educators, do you have one in your organisation? These people want to know 
uh, and want to hear from clinicians. They're, they're, they're desperate for engaged clinicians, in fact. Um, so don't feel that you're going to be in some way impinging on their time. They will hopefully welcome you and want you to be involved. In terms of developing the best case for the services that you envisage, they will help you do that. Um, I think everybody wants uh, the best value for money, and that includes finance people, and that includes uh, you as individuals. So uh, don't be afraid, contact your finance person directly. I would say if you're feeling blocked from, moving, uh, from meeting the finance person, either by your own line manager or by, by something else, um, there's nothing to stop you arming yourself with knowledge uh, to understand uh, how business cases are produced and how you can justify your own case. And a big part of that is firstly um, learning about a little bit more about finance itself and hopefully with our resources and our finance education you'll become more aware about what's important with um, uh, rehabilitative services for instance uh, and finance and what are the key points to get over. So my top tips would be um, firstly arm yourself with some knowledge so have an understanding of how money moves around the system so for instance a lot of rehabilitative services and the the, the tariff or the payment to the hospital is often bundled with uh, with other payments for instance for the whole patient pathway so so know about your particular area is what I would say uh, and know how money moves around the system know what the drivers are locally within your organization you know where it's going what it's planning what its priorities are. Uh, meet your local finance person, so the finance person that's, um, if you like, in charge of your clinical area. Equally, develop um, a relationship with the general manager, who's often very, who's a different person altogether from the finance person. And it's often that, um, that trio of clinician, finance, and general manager who will ultimately make uh, decisions, investment decisions. Um, so the relationships are uh, probably uh, as important as the, the baseline funded knowledge. You know, there, there's that phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And there is definitely an element of that. Um, and then the other thing I would say is there will always be opportunities. So they may not be today. It might be, you know, six months from now or a year from now. Um, and so if you have your ideas and you've thought them through and you can justify them in a sort of business case sort of a way, there will always be opportunities. And also other sources of, um, of financing. So, uh, you know, we often think about um, internal pots of money, but there can be charitable funds, uh, there can be call for grants, uh, call for uh, innovative ideas. Uh, so it's always worth having um, ideas that have been thought through uh, and uh, the numbers uh, stacked against the various elements uh, so that you have them in your back pocket. Uh, and then finally, I would say nurture those relationships uh, and wait for the right time. As part of our survey last year, we asked uh, both finance people and clinicians what it was in, in their teams, this is all across the country, uh, that, that made for an effective relationship. And overwhelmingly, people say face-to-face -face interactions were the best. Now, this may not come as a surprise to you and me, uh, but it just reaffirmed that. So, you know, emails, phone calls are okay. Um, in terms of knowledge transfer, things like uh, e-learning are okay. But the single biggest thing that made the difference was face-to-face -face meetings. What we know is that there are, there are lots and lots of teams that work together in organisations, across organisations. But these teams, despite having people who are really skilled and really knowledgeable in their areas, they often don't work together as teams. Um, so we work together with the Kingsman, with the Kingsman to develop a tool to, to help teams just reflect on how they're working together. Now it might sound a little bit kind of soft to do all of this stuff. You know, most of us as clinicians like the you know the nitty gritty uh, of day to day work, but actually this. Focusing on how well your team is working together is really important. So I would recommend people use this uh, Kingsman tool for collaboration, it's called, and you can access it through our website. Um, and uh, yeah, most we piloted it last year and 22 organisations uh, used it and really found it very effective in getting people talking and working better together. But, well, I think all rehabilitative services offer value, value for money. Um, for those uh, people who aren't familiar with the value equation, uh, which is 
uh, outcomes divided by costs, if you like. Um, it, it, it's something that's really helped me. So we think about um, quality of care or, or the numerator on this equation. It's, it's clinical outcomes together with patient experience, together with patient safety. So for instance, in the intensive care unit I work in, you know, a patient may have a great outcome from a surgical standpoint, but actually if they can't functionally do anything when they get home, well, that's not really a great clinical outcome. Um, equally, the patient's um, experience of, of going from being bed bound after an operation to being functional at home uh, uh, requires significant input from a whole range of different therapists and nurses uh, and that patient experience, uh, as shown in this equation, it, it really contributes massively to uh, patient experience and also patient safety. So, you know, again, my patient who's had the bypass um, could fall over as they get out of bed and crack their skull open and that would be a disaster, uh, both obviously to the patient and to all of us looking after the patient. So patient safety is something that uh, all therapists uh, and nurses and medical staff all contribute to. So I think that the, uh, the value and the input of, uh, of therapists uh, is really key uh, into the value of the service and it's something that rehabilitative services should really make clear to commissioners and other people designing services. So I think that's, that's what a therapist bring to the table. Thank you, Sam Jane. The URL for the webinar on quantifying the value of rehabilitation services is here. This provides a service example and tools and resources focused on the technical aspects of measuring value. You can find other resources, reports, vodcasts and webinars on the Community of Practices webpage. If you would like news and information about improving rehabilitation services emailed to you directly, please contact Catherine on this email address. And do keep in touch with us on Twitter using the hashtags hashtag rehab or hashtag rehab improvers. We very much welcome your feedback on this podcast to help us learn and improve what we offer. So please scroll down to uh, between the video screen and the comments box below and you'll find a link to an evaluation survey. In the meantime, thank you very much for listening.